a lot this, of blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> this is a reptile room. <laughs> So today I'm going to visit my friend Luke from Beach of Scaly Beasts. If you've watched the channel before, you've probably seen a few videos with him, but he's been very busy. He's moved house, set up a whole bunch of new reptile rooms, and I haven't been able to see it yet. So I'm going to head over there. I'm going to film my reaction to my first ever viewing of the new space. Let's go. All right, let's have a look at this room. Oh my goodness. Wow. It looked bigger in person. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Oh, little Kimbo. Oh, stop it. Oh, they're stacking on each other. I told you that'd be out. Wow, this is awesome, man. Oh, look at the little ones. Yeah, these look. So good, man. The backgrounds and everything, it's all so, yeah, it's like a little area at a zoo, man. It's bloody awesome. So I've known Luke now for quite a few years and I first visited his reptile collection and it was a lot different to what it is now. It was, uh, it was quite a few tub racks there, a lot of different snakes and morphs and all sorts of stuff. It was pretty much just the hodgepodge of everything you can sort of imagine. That was the first time. Then the next time I visited him, he actually had a massive obsession with bioactive enclosures and geckos and all sorts of stuff and still it was a lot of different animals in a bit of a space. But now, things have changed again. He's moved house and he's created a couple of reptile rooms, particularly this one, and he's really refined his focus. So it's really good to see. And we're gonna take a bit of a look around. I'll give you a quick rundown of what we've gotten where. Up here we do have my frill neck Billy. He's uh, currently eyeing something in the sky up here. He's a beautiful lizard. Had him for quite a while now. Uh, down in this enclosure down here, we've got my central bearded dragon, Sonic. Bit of an old fella as well. Over in this enclosure here, I have probably the newest acquisition as far as lizards go is my shingleback acorn. So he's pretty shy at the moment, but maybe we can get him out a bit later for some B-roll or something. Up here we've got two tanks of young gillenai. So we've got uh, some Tanami locality gillenai here that I'm hoping to repair. And then I've got what I believe are three male gillenai over in this far tank over here. Up here I've got a couple of young tristus that I've decided to grow up for a little while. Now over in these two tanks we've actually got a depressor in each of these tanks. So a gurney, a depressor or a little pingy spiny tail skinks. They're a really cool skink. So here in the monitor corner I've got my female Kimberly Rock monitor, Mrs. Wiggles. I have three gill and I up in this tank here, uh, three gill and I in this tank down here, and then I've also got my black headed monitors down in this tank over here. Actually, there's a male just hanging off the, the log right off there. How good is that? I'd definitely say they are some of the shire lizards. But in saying that, you know, like some days they are, some days they aren't. It just kind of comes down to whatever they're feeling like, really. They're one of the lizards that intrigue me the most. Maybe there's just different keepers out there. You know, uh, gillens are great. I love my gillens, don't get me wrong. They are my favorite lizard. But they're like shooting fish in a barrel when you come into this room. You can always see them out. They're always basking. They're always doing what little gillens do. Whereas these guys, you know, they might be doing something a little bit quirky. They might try to run from you. They might try to do this or that. And that kind of just keeps me on my toes a little bit. I kind of almost try to do a bit more like herping in my bedroom or, you know, my reptile room here. So different animals, different quirks, different strokes for different folks. It's that's one of those things. If they're interesting to you and you enjoy keeping them, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Oh, like a perfect example is I caught a little clip where I just put in this new log maybe a week or so ago, a bit over a week ago, and I saw one of my male tristers, he was on the back side of the log and he was hanging upside down with his head kind of poked out like a wild tristers would. <laughs> and like to me, that was just like the pinnacle. I was like, that's, that is like seeing the Tristus in the wild, you know, like that is what they'd be doing. The same sort of like little head twitches and twerks and stuff like that. I love being able to just kind of like change something and see an animal 
form a natural behavior like that. So tell us about these big termite mound looking things on the side of the uh, enclosure here. Version 3, 3.0. I've made a few different termite mounds in my time. Uh, but basically these are like a, a facade to a little nest box. So down behind this, which I'll show you in a sec, I've essentially got a plastic cereal container, which I've cut a hole into the top of and I just use sand. This year I'll probably go to like some cocoa paint and sand, like a bit of an old school mix of, on nesting material for these guys. But essentially it's just a way for it to look naturally pleasing, gives the animal something to climb up and down on. But inside of it, I've actually got a practical use for it underneath the heat. So I think there was one behind there, wasn't there? Yeah, one just went inside. There's a little hole down here where the, the gillens or the lizards can actually get down into. All right. And it's in there. Oh, it's in there. There you go. <laughs> it also acts as a bit of a humid hide for them as well. So if I make sure that there's enough water in there, then it gives them a bit of an opportunity just to be able to go in there and get a little bit more humidity and a little microclimate. Yeah, that's great, man. It's a great little idea. And for it's them. good too, because then I can just, you know, kind of scooch this aside, pull that box out, sift through it, do whatever I need to do, put everything back into place and, you know, hide it all up again, just like this. Yeah. Tristas have kind of got a larger version behind them. As far as the actual nesting container goes. So if you kind of like catch it on the right angle, if you were to come over the top here, you'll actually be able to see the nest box in the building. Oh yeah, you can see the corner of it, yeah. But you kind of have to be in that one position in the room to actually notice it. Yeah. But other, other than that, same sort of scenario. Just a facade. Yeah. But it's a practical facade, you know, they love hanging off it. They love smashing their bugs on it, doing all those sorts of little goanna things that they like Makes to them do. feel safe and secure. There's a bit of an extra barrier there in front of their nesting area. Yeah, I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, the one thing that I did is like, you know, I don't have any under four heating or anything on there, but it is underneath the basking light. So ambiently come those warmer months in the year as well, you know, down here is kind of that 29, 30 degrees, more, more or less give and take. So. I just keep an eye on the females and once they start looking skinny, I go for a dig and usually there's some eggs. So I love the neatness of these racks here. How are you hiding all the lighting and stuff? <laughs> uh, a little bit different to how I used to do it. I did have like core flute with some magnets on the outside, kind of like holding it to the rack. But since they're not discovered this PVC coated foam, it's only like a three mil sheet you can get from Bunnings. And then I've just hot glued a whole row of uh, magnets onto it and essentially I can Get to my lighting down and through here, you know, so if I need to move something around, I can still, I kind of measured out my hand space essentially, minus a watch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I can get to everything quite easily, the Miss King fittings, all that sort of gear. And then when oh, I'm done, great. I can just stick that on in the place, give it a little bit of a jiggle, make sure it all lines up okay. It's awesome, yeah, it gives it that real seamless sort of look. It stops the light bleed. Yeah. I, I, you know, really hated sitting here and getting a lot of light in my eyes and, you know, Obviously from a filming aspect as well, filming videos and things like that, that's, lighting's horrible. And this room's already bad as is with the covers on, but with the covers off, it was a nightmare. Yeah, old Randy here, he's a bit of a, um, bit of a unit, hey? He is a monster of a Gillens. He's a bloody good lizard, I'll give him that, but... <laughs> In your words, you just said that he could eat your Gillens. Easily, comfortably eat my Gillens monitor very easily. He is a weapon. He should give you some good babies in the future, hopefully. Yeah, I kind of... Uh, he's already given me babies. I just sold them all this year, which... You know, hindsight's a beautiful thing. I think I probably should have held on to a few of his. For a few reasons. I actually... <clears throat> I like the size of him. He's a bit of an impressive Gillens. But he's also got, like, a little bit more of that banding across his back. He does have, like, some slight yellow hues and stuff through it, which, you know, my original line of Gillens don't have a lot of. I'm very fond of him. The reason that he got the name Randy too is day one when I brought him home, he decided to want to, he decided to mate with one of the females like straight away. He was just he was very keen. He was a little bit Randy, so you know, <laughs> name stick um, gave me an excuse for that. So yeah, he's a pretty pretty decent sized lizard, especially compared to the females. Like the females look like little dwarfs compared to him. But even though he's so big, he's definitely still as agile and everything else as a Gillen should be. Oh, yeah. He's just a, a weapon. <laughs> I, I, I am conscious 
conscious about trying not to overfeed him. Yeah, sometimes I'll just make sure that I actually <laughs> get a hold of him. <laughs> Hopefully I'll let him finish his meal here, but he, uh... Yeah, he's a beast. He's a good-sized little Gillens. Yeah, if that just allows a minute for my female to catch a few extras or something like that. Which she's currently doing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, good old. She knows the drill. Yep. He spat out that one. That's okay. He's definitely seen his fair share of food. <laughs> Yeah, I do, I do really enjoy coming in here and seeing big Randy Randall sitting on his branch, <laughs> basking like a proud little girl I know that he is. He's a character. I'll give him that. Well, this one's definitely a lot more bold than last time I was here. Oh, yeah. That thing would she's, not come out at all before. <laughs> no, no. She's like, uh, I'd say she tongue feeds very readily for me nowadays, but not only that, like, I can put my hand in here and she generally... <laughs> She's coming to me now because you can see the jar. She generally won't run, run away. Very cool. Which is what you want out of most of your lizards, you know? Like, I, it, it doesn't really bother me here or there. They're all going to have their own sort of traits, but I do like being able to interact with my, with my lizards. I think it's one of those things too that I'm trying to strive for myself a little bit now. It's a bit of a varied diet for my animals. You know, I got very stuck in doing like crickets or woodies or, you know, sure, m m maybe mixing it up with a few different like meaty options and such. But I think it's awesome to be able to kind of go, well, a lot of these animals, maybe kimbos are a bit different being, you know, skink feeders and things in the wild. But a lot of these animals are very heavily insectivorous, so being able to try to like provide your animals with a big variety of insects is awesome. And you know, for me personally, and I know we've just been talking about this, the fact that you know Frizy from Frizy's Hoppers has been able to produce grasshoppers on mass and be able to produce them for for the hobby. You know, these are the things that our animals would actually be eating out in nature, being Australian animals. Like we have that many grasshopper species here, and being able to provide our animals grasshoppers now which is like a massive thing for Australia it's not necessarily for the US or the UK they've been doing that for ages but being able to add this into our arsenal in amongst you know mealworms crickets and woodies and you know black soldier fly larvae and you know all these other sort of insects that are out there it's bloody awesome hmm. so over time things have obviously changed not just location but also the animals you still have here and what you're really enjoying these days so I just wanted to get a bit of your thoughts on why the downsize, what things did you keep and what reason why and uh, how it sort of affected you in the long term? Yeah, okay. Um, downsizing, well, I didn't really downsize too much before I actually moved here. So I did bring all of the animals up here in a very painstaking week of moving enclosures and setting everybody up and doing everything. But the main sort of downsize was basically... I started running out of a little bit of room for some of the bigger species to keep them how I wanted to keep them. So being able to actually give animals adequate space and things was one of the things that I was starting to kind of run into some conflict inside of my own head and, you know, struggle, struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, things like seeing Loki, for example, who was growing into this big one metre plus mangrove monitor and then she was in an enclosure that was a little bit bigger than two metres. It just didn't feel right to kind of have her in a space where she was very limited uh, and then you know things change dynamics change in the family my wife Danny she got pregnant uh, with our son Finnan and it was kind of like a oh where do I put the kid moment sort of thing because I've got these two bedrooms taken up completely with reptiles and nowhere for my child to go so you know babies take up so much time out of your day I kind of really had to start looking at how I can work amongst my means and try to figure out what's going to work for me, what's my focus, what am I really into. Long story short, everybody out there that knows me knows Gillen's monitors are my thing and Odatra in general are definitely something that I've been keen on for a long time. So I think when the push came to shove, I decided to move the geckos on just because it would allow me a couple of less night shift feedings <laughs> and it also just allowed me that little bit more space to create another couple of enclosures to be able to raise up some future animals in. There's a million things I want to do and there's not enough time in the world, unfortunately. 
I look back to like the videos that you took years ago when he's kind of like in a three foot glass box or you know three foot enclosure or something like that one I'm so stoked I wish I'd done this earlier mm. but so stoked to get him into something that's actually half decent you know and he uses it like he, he loves climbing up and down this thing and coming to the ground and hunting and you know you think about beauty in the wild like they're up on vantage points and you know kind of getting out there and being able to yeah. give him like a, a a bigger space to do that rather than a four foot tank that's you know got a log 20 centimeters off the ground or something like that yeah it's for me it's huge it really brings out the most of the animal like like you're saying beauties in the wild when i saw some in the wild a few months back literally all of them were halfway up a tree or on a big rock face running around and they are some you know literal little dragons they're so cool i love seeing him in this i really do so this room looks so incredible and so natural and amazing partly because of the backgrounds in these enclosures they really add an extra element and uh there's something new that luke's been doing for a little while now and it's something that you can actually get involved with as well. So I'll let Luke talk a little bit about his new business with these backgrounds. Basically from bush to box started after I got to see some gillens in the wild. And I basically wanted to bring that home with me so much that I took a bunch of photos. And when I got home, I decided to print them out on some very specific vinyl, some very heavy duty laminated vinyl that's, you know, UV resistant, very scratch resistant. And it, it was originally just kind of a plan for myself to kind of put a couple of images in a tank and call it a day. And from there it kind of grew into, I really enjoy this, I want to turn my whole room into this. Which then developed into a lot of people reaching out and contacting me and going, hey, where can I get your backgrounds? And then I kind of decided, well, I may as well start up a little business doing this. It's uh, something that I'm very passionate about. Building rock walls or rock structures and stuff for certain animals is perfectly fine and you know creates a lot of usable space for those animals there's no disregarding that but some people depending on species want a bit more of an instant result maybe they don't want to work you know for a week or two or three or four on you know developing a rock wall for an animal maybe they have a species that doesn't particularly climb rocks like a fruit neck lizard here for example that's on trees and they want something that's a bit more of an instant result where they can essentially take these gigantic background stickers and stick them into their tank over the course of oh, maybe an hour, maybe two, depending on how quick you work with them. And then you've got that instant result. You can clean them easily with F10 and all sorts of disinfectants and it's not going to damage the background. You know, the biggest lizard I have tried them with is a frill neck lizard and he has jumped or tried to jump against the background a couple of times and, you know, scraped his claws down them and hasn't damaged the background so that's been something that's really beneficial uh, even for people that you know might want to keep venomous snakes or something like that that want to keep a enclosure a little bit more i'll call it sterile or barren or something like that uh you know it's just one of those things that's opening up a lot of options and i don't know about you coop but i personally got sick of looking at like a plain white or a black or a glass wall for me now coming into this room feels a little bit more like coming into my own private zoo exhibit versus coming into my reptile room of days yonder, you know, like it's, times have changed. And as I've said to Coop plenty of times now, all these enclosures are very simple and they're very functional, but at the same time, having these backgrounds on there brings that aesthetical pop to the enclosures that really kind of just, yeah, brings a new dimension into them. So essentially, once you get your roll in the mail, you can roll out your image. This is definitely a smaller image compared to what a lot of people do get but it's a good example so essentially you'll get an image you know whichever one you decide to go for and it comes in a roll like this this is just a 90 centimeter 90 centimeter by 60 centimeter image you can almost see that it almost has like it kind of tries to retain the form like it's that thick mm. but essentially the image has two different layers on it where it does have like a matte finish on a, a laminated layer I've been working with this for, I'd have to be close to 18 months now. Yeah, it'd be about 18 months. And like all my original backgrounds are still very much intact. So I really think these backgrounds could be an amazing addition to our reptiles enclosures. It's just another little step forward towards bringing a slice of nature into our homes. There you have it guys. There's a look around at Luke's new place and 
the amazing reptile room and everything that's going on here. Obviously there is a lot more other species and things you can look at, but you can check those out over on Luke's channel itself. Make sure you go and follow him over at Beach of Scaly Beast. I'll have all the links down in the comments below. Never anything boring going on. He's always up to something. Yeah, make sure you go check him out. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.